First of all, you a beauty sky, beauty comes to you. Talk about groovy, the way with relationship issues. Beauty leaves. Amaka tells you, I like groovy. You go to tell groovy that Amaka likes you, and then you start making past that groovy. You and groovy now become a thing. So you should now be kind of. Do you really owe Amaka anything? No, I didn't. I don't know what you're trying to have that shit, but you get like. Look at the means in which you guys are getting a thing. You see this new Daniela I'm seeing this past weeks, my God, she keeps surprising me and sometimes I like it. Sometimes I'm kind of confused. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with this new personality that she keeps bringing, you know, to the fore. And guys, honestly, I don't know if I can keep up. I mean, Daniela apparently seems to be very, very judgmental. Yeah. I'm very manipulative as well because I was listening to a conversation with Alison last night. Ella Swartz was also there. That one was just listening as an amiable that he is, you know. So she was saying a lot of things about Rachel. Yeah, she complained about her beef with Rachel. And then she also started complaining about Fina. And guys, hey <laughs> God, the way this girl was kind of dragging Fina, she was dragging Fina like she wasn't dragging Fina. She was judging Fina like she wasn't judging Fina. And this is the same exact thing that she did with Amaka that actually now formed that negative perception that the other housemates had about Amaka that even fueled their reasons to nominate Amaka for immediate eviction. Now that's the same thing again that Daniela started doing about Fina last night. And guys, I did not find it funny at all. She said a lot and I'm going to counter some of the things she said with some of our own shenanigans in that house. So please watch to the end of this video. Uh, for those of you that watched last night's episode, please just go ahead and let me know how you felt whilst watching that conversation. And whether you watched it or not, I'm sure everybody has an opinion about this. So please just go ahead and share with us in the comment section below. All right. And hey guys, don't forget today is Saturday. We will be having our FSWG Saturday YouTube live stream by 3 p.m. WAT. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to talk about. This week has been action packed. So please do not miss out. Feel free to invite people. And remember, it's going to be a virtual conversation, meaning you can see me, I can see you, we can discuss, we can banter, we can share intellectual conversation. So please make sure you come through. Do not miss out. And if you're new on here, thank you so much for choosing to click on my videos to watch. Yes, but please, if you're yet to subscribe, just go ahead and do exactly what you see on your screen. All right. Now, without much further ado, let's just continue with this conversation. And before she had had that conversation with Alison, um, Groovy had confronted Daniela over an issue that Fina had brought to his attention. That Fina had told him that, oh, Daniela said something negative about you, about us, our relationship. Now, Groovy wasn't finding it funny because Daniela is kind of like his friend in the house and um, he likes her, he respects her. So, um, in Daniela's defense, she had argued back that she did not say anything nasty about Groovy or their relationship. That it was Fina that had come to her for advice or like they were more like having conversations and Fina had brought up the whole conversation, you know, about their relationship. And she had advised Fina that if she really likes the guy, she should just go ahead and do whatever she wants to do. If she wants to vibe or catch crews, however way she sees the relationship, she should use that energy for the relationship. Yes, that she did not advise Fina anything otherwise. She only added that Fina should not lose focus of her game because relationship did not bring her to the house. Now, <laughs> they had had that conversation and they had resolved it. But Daniela apparently was still pained and offended, you know, that why would Fina go ahead to say something like that to Groovy? And so she had taken the conversation to her friend Alison to complain about it. I'm telling you what, what Fina said to him. That I said, that he said to me. I'm like, bro, I feel like that is they were talking when Elo Swartz had actually joined them to just pay attention to all the gist. And guys, that was where I had a problem because we know the way Elo Swartz nominates people in that house. Elo Swartz nominates based on what I heard. Them say, she said, he said, he never uses his strategic sense. That is if he has one to nominate. So him sitting down there listening to the conversation, guys, I became really, really pissed. At Daniela because it was as though she it was when they were having this conversation that Ellis Swartz had actually come to sit down at the edge of the bed to listen to what they were saying now before she had even gone to Alison she had complained about that whole drama 
to Dotu in the head of house bedroom. She had complained about Rachel. She had also complained about Fina. Now, the energy that she was using to complain about these people, she was very, very vehement about it. She was very, very malicious about it. And in the midst of being malicious, she was trying to make it look like she was the victim. These people are just coming at her for no reason. She was, sound, she was trying to sound all innocent and also in the process, trying to buy the sympathy of Dotun. And it kind of worked because, guys, we know that Dotun has a soft spot for her. Dotun was trying to pacify her, but she was still acting like she was really upset, that she was really frustrated, that people are frustrating her so much, like these people are just trying to drag her into issues for no reason at all, that she's the peace lover, she's the peace maker and on her own she will be and then trouble will come and look for her trouble will come and locate her and then she had left Dotun to go and have that conversation with Alison now instead of her to just go straight to the point and you know just explain the real reason she was actually upset with Fina she went ahead to do so right first she talked about Rachel complained about the whole task thing they had the previous day that Rachel had actually lashed out at her and mind you she had had this conversation before with um, Bella and sheds and i love the fact that bella had been very very straight up with her bella had told her that listen we were all there and i understand that um rachel and her team and i understand that rachel and her team they were very very upset they were very very loud but then you too your tone the way you address people sometimes it's very very harsh and it might come off as rude yes especially when we're in the arena having tasks you are fond of doing exactly that and guys Honestly, that was like a glorious moment for me because I felt like, wow, for the first time, <laughs> now that it's not even involving Shags at all, Bella is sounding very, very neutral and she's spitting facts. Guys, we know that when it comes to task, because Daniela has this energy and this, you know, this, um, should I say drive to win, she does not care who she's talking to. Sometimes she comes off as rude and authoritative, yes. And sometimes it's not all the housemates that has that strength to actually condone it. So the likes of um, Rachel, who is already a biggest rider, a biggest fake housemate, yes. Such things she would definitely ride on to trigger whoever is dishing out that kind of energy. And that was exactly what Rachel had done in Daniela's case the previous day in the arena. As I said, Daniela had talked about the whole Rachel issue, she had complained about it, but not with so much maliciousness, not with so much spite. Nah, she did not talk about it that way. But then when she now started talking about the Fina conversation, guys, oh my God, the energy, the spitefulness, it was deep. Look at the means in which you guys became okay. Daniela is spiteful. And you didn't want to talk about when you go off to Daniela, you can't have moods or something like that. What? What are you saying? And then she even went as far as narrating descriptively the chronological order of how Fina and Groovy now are together. First of all, you a beauty guy, beauty comes to you, talk about Groovy, the relationship issues. Beauty leaves, Amaka tells you I like Groovy, you go to tell Groovy that Amaka likes you, and then you start making past that Groovy, you and Groovy now become a thing. Like guys, the way, <laughs> the way Daniela told the story, I, I literally screamed in my apartment, I was like what? Like, but this was not what happened. This was not exactly how it happened. I mean, at that point in time, oh my God, it dawned on me that, wow, this might just be a strategy for Daniela. When she has issues with people, she would go to any extent to paint a negative narrative about them. she create the narrative and then she will spread it out to people she sees as loyalists to her, yes, especially to her friends, yes, and then she would... She will repeat it. She'll become repetitive with that narrative until she sees that it's beginning to take effect. It's beginning to form their own opinion about those persons. She did the same thing with Amaka, guys. She did it with Amaka. In fact, talking about the same beauty, she did it with beauty as well. She did it with beauty. Back then, when she would throw little jabs here and there at beauty, and then she would laugh over it and make it look like, oh, it's just an innocent joke. She and Brian, they used to do that thing a lot at beauty they used to they used to trigger beauty a lot and then beauty got disqualified and then she was acting like oh my god i was in beauty's good books oh beauty was a was a darling and now she did the same thing to amaka and it riled up most of the level one housemates against amaka and that's why i mentioned earlier guys that it got me scared that elo swags was actually sitting down there and listening to all that conversation because besides the head of house games that it thrives very well in yes when it comes to normal independent reasoning that guy acts like he has no mind of his own. He acts like, 
I don't know, like a yes, yeah, it's been acting like a bootlicker. Yes, on on the show. Because how can you nominate people and then you don't have your own valid reason? The only reason you have is inherited beef. Oh, people said X Y Z X Y Z. That was the same thing that he did with Tamaka. And guys, that was why I was really livid at the point last night when Daniela kept on reiterating and reiterating and re reiterating her own negative narrative about Fina and how Fina got to be with Groovy. Guys, we all know the story. I'm not even going to waste your time going over it again. And this is not me saying that Groovy and Fina's relationship started off on a solid foundation or on a perfect foundation. No, it did not. We know that Fina was wrong in jumping into a relationship with Groovy, not even after one week, that Beauty was actually disqualified from the show, especially because she and Amaka, they were constantly offering relationship advice to, to Beauty. Yes, we accept that. But about the aspect that Fina was actually making advances at Groovy, no way. That's a blatant lie. Guys, we saw what happened. We saw that initially, Amaka did not like 100% have interest in Groovy, to be very honest, if we think about it. And if we're being honest with ourselves, Amaka did not. Yes, Amaka's major interest were Giddy Fire and Dotu. Dotu was more like a backup plan, you know, together with Giddy Fire, yes. But originally, Amaka's own interest, her crush, was Giddy Fire. Groovy was just there, fresh out of a breakup, or should I call it, fresh out of a, a toxic relationship. And Fina, just as she had done from the start of the show, because she was also part of the people that coupled up together, Groovy and Beauty, yes. So in her own natural state, she decided that, oh yes, her friend has been looking for a man, her friend has been horny, yes. So she's going to try as much as possible to link up her friend with Groovy. But guess what? While she was trying to hustle Groovy for Amaka, Groovy instead was indicating interest in her and was gravitating towards her. And guys, we know the situation with Fina. And please, let me pause here and just say that once again, this is not me defending Fina. I'm telling you guys what exactly happened on the show. What I saw play out on the show. Groovy had made his advances at Fina. He had made it known to Fina that he prefers Fina to Amaka. And Fina had accepted, gladly. Now, that is the part where I felt like Fina was really, really wrong again for the second time. Yes, because she should have had that conversation with Amaka. Let Amaka know that, okay, fine, this guy I'm trying to get for you. He has made it known to me that it is me that he likes. And me too, I have been liking him from the start. Yes, but I felt like there was no need to get into anything with him because I did not feel that he, re he reciprocates my, my feelings as well. But now he likes me, I think I would want to give it a try because, of course, you already have giddy fire. Guys, <laughs> bam, conversation had. Then it is now left for her to now proceed with whatever she wants to do based off of um, Amaka's reaction to that conversation. Yes, at least she can now have a backup, you know, testimonial to herself to say that, oh, at least I have this conversation with you. And this was exactly what you said. But she did not have that conversation. But talking about the narrative of, oh, um, Fina went to go and seduce Groovy, that's a blatant lie. And that's a dirty, stinking narrative that Daniela has started pushing an agenda in that house and that's why i just looked at this girl last night and i felt like wow if this is a strategy wow i'm amazed i never thought that daniela would be capable i was more irritated because with the passion she was you know sharing this narrative last night i was just asking myself i said babe have you looked at yourself but have you also seen that you yourself is not a saint because look at you Betraying Kelly, doing whatever you want to do with Dotu in the house and then trying to play the victim card, making it look like Dotu is the one dragging you close to him, pestering you to be with him, whereas you are the one that is also gravitating towards him. You are the one that is also leading him on. Yes. And if you did not like the guy, baby, you should have left the head of house bedroom already. Yes. So you are not judging yourself harshly that way, but you think you can actually judge any other person that way. You think you're in the best position to judge other people that way. To be very frank with you guys, <laughs> honestly, I don't know. I would love to know what you think about this new Daniela because this new Daniela that we are seeing, she came prepared this second part of the season. She came prepared. She came prepared to come and eliminate all her contenders, whether she does it in the most spiteful or and in the most negative way possible. It seems as though she's ready for what comes with it. So guys, I'll just end this video here. Just go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to join us by 3 p.m. WAT today to discuss more about all the happenings on the show. And I'll see you guys very soon. Have an amazing day.